It's been a decade. Ten years ago this month, the United States Supreme Court heard arguments in a landmark case, a case whose ruling would recognize, for the first time, that video games are afforded the same protections the First Amendment to the United States Constitution acknowledges for film, music, journalism, literature, and more. I'm Joe. Welcome to Same Name, Different Game, Guy Dead. Politicians and parents groups have been getting mad at violence in video games basically since they were invented. The first big row over such a thing was all the way back in 1976 over Exidy's Death Race, a game that shared a name with, but did not carry the license of, the 1975 Roger Corman classic Death Race 2000. Incidents like this would continue for years, with calls for censorship, calls of won't somebody think of the children, and so on. Of course, everyone around my age remembers the 1993 Senate hearings, including games like Mortal Kombat and Lethal Enforcers, which resulted in the ESRB. In a perhaps illogical extension of that, in 2005, a California State Assemblyman named Leland Yee, yes, that one, drafted a law that was passed by the Assembly and signed by then-Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. This law prevented the sale of violent video games to minors, with a hefty fine of $1,000 per incident being levied against any retailers who violated it. But what's a violent video game? Is Mario violent? He jumps on the heads of Goombas and Koopas. Is Street Fighter violent? Tekken? Manhunt? Well, the bill just so happened to contain language that explained. A game that does either of the following. A comes within all of the following descriptions. 1. A reasonable person, considering the game as a whole, would find appeals to a deviant or morbid interest of minors. 2. Is patently offensive to prevailing standards in the community as to what is suitable for minors. And 3. It causes the game as a whole to lack serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value for minors. Or B enables the player to virtually inflict serious injury upon images of human beings or characters with substantially human characteristics in a manner which is especially heinous, cruel, or depraved in that it involves torture or serious physical abuse to the victim. The first part of that is a variation on what's known as the Miller Standard, defined in a Supreme Court obscenity case from 1973. There are, of course, two problems with this. The first is that, quite clearly, it's subjective if a work has serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. But more substantially, at least as far as the courts are concerned, the Miller Standard had historically been applied to pornography. That is to say, works depicting sexual acts, not violent ones. Quite naturally, the Entertainment Software Association, a lobbying group formed and funded by video game publishers, alongside the Video Software Dealers Association, a lobbying group for retailers, immediately filed a legal challenge to the law. In August of 2007, the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California ruled that the law did indeed violate the First Amendment. Schwarzenegger and the state of California appealed the decision, and in February of 2009, they were defeated once again. California's lawyers argued that a lesser degree of what's referred to as scrutiny should be applied here, as with obscene materials. That is to say, the state should only need to provide a rational basis for the law to stand. In this case, said rational basis being, effectively, won't someone think of the children. The three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit, however, disagreed, since, as previously stated, obscenity laws have traditionally been applied to sexual material. As such, they applied strict scrutiny to the proposed law and its relationship to the First Amendment. This is a higher standard when it comes to looking at legislation, and legal scholars often say that it is strict in name, but fatal in fact. Schwarzenegger, of course, appealed again, and the court granted certiorari, agreeing to hear the case. 
And yes, a decade ago this very month, they did hear oral arguments from attorneys for the state of California and for the Entertainment Merchants Association, a group formed in 2006 after the Video Software Dealers Association merged with the Interactive Entertainment Merchants Association. This case was a big deal, not only for game players, but for anyone dedicated to the cause of free speech. The First Amendment has a few exceptions, to be sure, but they are few, and video games, being a relatively new medium, had not definitively been recognized as protected speech. You may laugh and think that's absurd, but consider how new media is often treated. In 1915, less than a century before the case we're talking about today, the Supreme Court under Chief Justice Edward White ruled in Mutual Film Corporation v. Industrial Commission of Ohio that movies were a product, a business, not art, and therefore not protected by the First Amendment. Would that happen again with video games? Or did the court grant cert in this case to make it clear that games were protected? In all honesty, I suspected from the beginning that it was the latter, but a lot of people had legitimate concerns that the former was on the table, that the highest court of the United States would say that video games were not subject to the same protections that films now were. But if you read the transcripts from the day the arguments happened, as I did on that day, it felt pretty clear which way this was going. And when the audio was released shortly after, for my own part, I had no question. The justices, from both sides, lobbed question after question at California's Deputy Attorney General, Zachary Morazzini, barely allowing him to get a word in edgewise. From Justice Scalia comparing violent games to Grimm's fairy tales. A deviant would be departing from established norms. Uh, there are established norms of violence? Well, I think if we look back... I mean, some of the Grimm's fairy tales are, are quite grim, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Agreed, Your Honor. To Justice Sotomayor asking if there were studies about the negative effects of Bugs Bunny cartoons, could California do the same thing to them? So can the legislature now, because it has that study, say we can outlaw Bugs Bunny? This isn't to say that justices didn't have questions for Paul Smith, the attorney for the EMA, particularly Justice Breyer, who pointed to literature indicating the differences between interactive entertainment and passive entertainment. And both groups come to the conclusion that there is some tendency to increase violence, and the American Psychiatric Psychological Association, the American Pediatric Association, sign on to a long list on, I think it's the Anderson side, that this does hurt children. I have to admit that if I'm supposed to be a sociological expert, I can't choose between them. But if I can say, could a legislature have enough evidence to think there's harm? The answer is yes. And Chief Justice Roberts talking about, I think, Postal 2 from a description earlier in the case. We do not have a tradition in this country of telling children they should watch people actively hitting schoolgirls over the head with a shovel so they'll beg with mercy, being merciless and decapitating them, shooting people in the leg so they fall down, pour, I'm reading from the district court description, pour gasoline over them, set them on fire, and urinate on them. We do not have a tradition in this country. We protect children from that. But Smith stayed the course, arguing repeatedly that there is not a First Amendment exception that precludes children's access to violent material. And in the end, that was largely what won the day. The Supreme Court, particularly the Roberts Court, has been very wary of creating new exceptions to the First Amendment, and in the summer of 2011, the decision was released. In a 7-2 split, Justice Scalia, writing the majority opinion, joined by Justices Kagan, Sotomayor, Kennedy, Ginsburg, Alito, and Roberts, with a concurring opinion written by Alito and joined by Roberts. The court ruled that California's law was unconstitutional. Justice Scalia, in his opinion, said that in the prior term, in another case, we held that new categories of unprotected speech may not be added to the list by a legislature that concludes certain speech is too harmful to be tolerated. He further stated, the government argued in Stevens that lack of historical warrant did not matter, 
that it could create new categories of unprotected speech by applying a simple balancing test that weighs the value of a particular category of speech against its social costs and then punishes that category of speech if it fails the test. We emphatically rejected that startling and dangerous proposition. Strange though this may sound, Justices Thomas and Breyer wrote separate dissents, expressing displeasure with the outcome for different reasons. Still, the court had ruled, not especially narrowly, that video games in the United States are protected by the First Amendment. This, of course, hasn't stopped certain types of people, including the NRA of all groups, from continuing to demonize video games. And they're, of course, free to do that, but at least it's been made clear that they're not free to use the force of the state to keep them out of players' hands. I'm Joe, this has been Same Name Different Game Guy Den, and I'll see you next time. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching me talk about a Supreme Court case. If you dug this, do the stuff. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't, ring the stupid bell, and so on. If you really liked it, consider supporting directly via Patreon or YouTube membership. It keeps the channel ad-free and gets you early access to new videos. Your name here with these cool people, and more. You can also buy merch and use the affiliate links to small businesses in the description to help out. If you want more legal talk, the video on the left is about the time Capcom sued Data East over a Street Fighter clone, and the video on the right is on Tetris, which has a lot of legal history tied up in it.